Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video. You might remember in the last video I talked about few conditions that can cause bleeding from our esophagus. Today I'm going to talk about a third condition which can sometimes cause quite alarming life-threatening bleeding from the esophagus. Okay, so <clears throat> quickly to recap before we start with esophageal viruses is uh, how, first of all, bleeding presents from our esophagus. If our esophagus, what we also call the food pipe, is bleeding, how the bleeding will appear in our body. So first thing was, uh, one can vomit blood out, one can pass very black stools or uh, like chop liver color stools uh, from our bottom end, and also with a very low blood count or very thin blood called anemia because in this case the patients are losing blood very very slowly in these two cases the patient is losing blood very fast um, or they can present with a combination of all three so if we remove this top one um, the conditions we spoke about last time um, was esophagitis and malary vice tear Today, I'm going to talk about the condition called varices, or uh, to be very, very precise, esophageal varices. So, okay, first of all, to understand what esophageal varices are, we know what esophagus is, which we also call the food pipe, that is the pipe that takes the food from our throat into our stomach. Now, to understand what varices is, first of all, we need to know what sort of blood vessels where they are in our body. So to show that, I've drawn this little picture. And if you look at this, the H is the heart. H is the heart. That is the blood vessel taking blood out of the heart, what we call the arteries. And this is the blood vessel which brings blood back into the heart. These are called the veins. So there are two different types of blood vessels in our body, arteries and the veins. Yeah. The bigger arteries divide into smaller arteries and they divide into further smaller arteries and smaller veins drain into the bigger vein and even further smaller veins drain into these smaller veins. Where are the arteries and what do they look like? Arteries are very strong blood vessels. They're like this hose pipe. Yeah. They're very tough, very strong, very muscular. So you can't stretch them easily. If I want to stretch, blow air into this hose pipe, I won't be able to blow it up like a balloon. Whereas veins are like balloons. So they are very thin walled. To know where the veins are, if you look at the back of my hand, you can see these little bulging veins. So these are the veins. They are very soft, very pliable. And if you put pressure in them, they can stretch very easily and they can burst very easily. Where are the arteries in my body? One of the arteries, which we all know of, is the little pulse that we can feel on the thumb side, just below my wrist. On this side, I can feel the pulse over there. That is the very strong muscular artery, like a hose pipe. Now, what happens in varices? So if we go back to this picture that I've drawn earlier. Now, in this picture, if you focus just on this picture at the moment, you can see blood going into our small blood vessels, what we call the veins, and those veins become slightly larger veins, and then they drain into even a larger vein. If we put a blockage across here, which I have done over here, yeah, so if we have a blockage across here, no matter whatever is causing the blockage, there is a tightening, there is a narrowing, there is a tumor, whatever is causing the blockage to the path of this vein. Now the pressure is building on this side because the blood can't go through it easily. Either this is very tight or this has become completely blocked. And the blood vessels above the blockage are becoming bigger and they become twisty. You can see they're becoming twisty and they're becoming much bigger than they were before. And this, these swollen blood vessels, these bigger blood vessels which have become very twisty are called varicose veins or varices. Now, when they happen in our food pipe, which I have drawn over here. So now I have a diagram in front of you, which shows our esophagus and our stomach. It looks very busy at the moment because lots of lines and dots, etc. in it. But let's just focus on this bit over here. So these are the dilated blood vessels. 
which are not normally present. Normally they're very, very small, these blood vessels like threads. And if somebody puts a camera down, you can't see these blood vessels easily. But if there's a blockage to the path of these blood vessels, then they become very twisty and very, very swollen, like what we call varices. And because they're happening in the esophagus, they can happen in different parts of our body. In the digestive system lower down, they can happen as well in the stomach, in the intestine, in the legs, they can happen. But in the case of the esophagus, they are called esophageal varices. The reason is because they are varices which are happening in the esophagus. And why are they happening? The reason they are happening is because the blood from the esophagus is drained through bigger blood vessels, like I showed earlier, into the liver. And I have drawn the liver over here. So you can see the liver sits just next to the esophagus, just in front of the esophagus. And so that's our liver. And the blood is flowing from the esophagus into the bigger blood vessel which is present in the liver and from the liver it goes into the heart. Heart is just up here above the chest. Yeah. Now the problem is not these blood vessels which is causing the problem. The problem is the liver because liver is not healthy. Liver has got disease in it. This disease of the liver is causing scarring of the liver. So if the liver gets scarred, got lots of scar tissue in it, yeah, let's make the liver scarred. And what that scar does, it presses on these blood vessels which are going to the liver. When these blood vessels are getting blocked, as I showed earlier in my diagram, that when the blood vessels get blocked, like I showed down here, then they become very dilated and they become very swollen. Same thing happening over here now. Because of the diseased liver, the blood vessels are getting back pressure and they are becoming very swollen and very dilated. So these patients have, under, most of these patients have underlying liver disease. The liver disease could be because of excessive alcohol, because of infections, because of tumor, etc, etc, etc. Now, when these blood vessels become very swollen, as I said, they are very thin walled because they are veins, they can burst very easily. When they burst, bleeding can happen. And that bleeding can be serious bleeding. That's why all these deaths, red dots that I have drawn, there are loads of them. And the blood is coming up, which is patient vomiting blood, and lots of blood going down. All these red spots, lots of arrows. As compared to my previous video, there were only few dots and few arrows in the previous conditions. Esophagitis and... Uh, Malady wise, there were fewer dots. In this case, there are many, many dots, which mean the bleeding is very, very heavy. Now, what is the treatment for it? The treatment is not to try and cure the condition because liver is disease and you can't replace the liver easily. So the treatment is to try and control the pressure in these blood vessels. So by giving different medication, different tablets, injections, to reduce the pressure in these blood vessels so they don't burst in the first place. So taking a pressure of the dam, so something which is blocking the veins over here, making that pressure a bit less so the blood is flowing a bit easier. That's one option to do. The second option is, if God forbids, they start bleeding and they're bleeding very heavily to try and stop the bleeding. Now, there are very different ways of stopping the bleeding by camera, by injections into the blood vessels, etc., etc., surgery. But these are very specialized procedures which are done in very specialized centers. So uh, talking about them will confuse the, 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 this video and make it too complicated for uh, people to understand. So to remember, esophageal varices are dilated blood vessels in the lower part of the esophagus. They are happening because the liver is diseased and the blood to the liver is not going easily, which is put, putting back pressure on the blood vessels, making them to become swollen. And as they swell, they become bigger and bigger and they can burst. If they burst, that's a very serious problem and the bleeding um, can be life-threatening bleeding. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in a few days' time.